Welcome back to Ferocious Education. This is Zed. Today I'm going to be talking about XL Fleet. This is an update to my previous DD on it. Nonetheless, this one will be a wholesome video that will give you a good insight. Make sure to stay to the end of the video because I'll explain why I think this stock is highly undervalued with some data and key valuation mentioned. Make sure to drop a like this video to help the channel grow, subscribe, and leave your gift done. I'm going to go through technical analysis after the due diligence part. But if you would like to skip through there, you'll find it somewhere around halfway through the video. Let's jump right into it. Excel Fleet. I've gone through this before and I will go on a little bit through some details that I think are important. Excel Fleet really works with four different parts. Excel Hybrid, which basically is a hybrid system that delivers 25% more miles per gallon, increases a 20% in carbon dioxide reduction for class 2 to 6 fleets. I'll show you what these are in a second. XL plugin system seamlessly goes on basically as a plugin for electrical batteries. Uh, it works onto the F-150s currently and the F-250s Fords, and they deliver up to 50% more miles per gallon. Now, a 33% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions and performance and meets substantial levels of carbon dioxide emissions decrease. Now the XL Link provides fleet with actionable intelligence on their vehicle electrification metrics, mission reduction, summari uh, summaries, and it also alerts the service team if there are any issues. This is more of a tracking uh, Excel for, uh, for employers or if you have a fleet. Now the next thing coming in here is Excel Grid. The Excel Grid is really interesting. The Excel Grid basically is power stations and chargings or fleets and there has been previous news about it where they anticipate a massive increase of use for grid. So far 2.5 million gallons of fuel saved, around 25,000 metric tons of customer, uh, sorry, of carbon dioxide reduced, 20,000 hours of driver productivity added. Some of their customers are the Canadian Linen and Uniform Services, Harvard, Yale, Verizon, DT Energy, FedEx, the list goes on. Now jumping on. Some of the latest news including this was by the way the xl grid i was talking about and they expect that 200 more than 200 fleet customers to require at least 100,000 charging stations in the next several years based on growing demand now the next thing moving forward here what we get to see their pivotal announcement effective this off registration statement regarding their annual meeting of stockholder to approve the proposed merger xl fleet and is going to be held on the 21st and so if this actually holds up uh, this actually passes on the new ticker will be instead of PIC it will go to XL and so basically as of the stockholder on record for December 7th that includes days ago they'll be eligible to vote in the annual meeting now of course I do expect for this one to pass uh, substantially so that is something to be expected on it the meeting will be at 9 a.m. at December 21st, 2020, end in a month. And we're, we get to expect that perhaps um, this this merger would be already completed sometime early on in 2021. Now, they usually have a deadline for things like this, but sometimes it does it goes on ahead of time. We should be able to hear more news about this one in the annual general meeting. Now, the next thing here is who they are. They have 10 years of experience with 100 million miles. Their industry leader in electrification for class 2 to 6 commercial vehicles. Uh, if you don't know what the class 2 to 6 vehicles here on their presentation, class 2 to 6, basically utility vans, pickup trucks, mini bus, city de deliveries, and going all the way to bucket trucks, step vans, school buses, and box trucks. Those are 2 to 3 and 4 to 6 respectively. So they are industry leaders in electrifications of those vehicles. Strong partnerships with major uh, manufacturers such as Ford, GM, Chevrolet, and Isuzu. Substantial saving in fuel cost and greenhouse emissions. The most carb is executive orders around 18 of any electrification provider. So all these things are quite important. And when you talk about, for instance, city deliveries, that is something interesting for me. Something like, for instance, the F... For, uh, I think what is it F945 uh, sorry F59 for super duties um, and as well as light delivery vehicles when you think about it 
And there's two main things substantial for this one. If you remember, the USPS needed to update their fleet. And um, there has been talks, for instance, like companies like Workhorse. But if they still go on with companies that are not like Workhorse and still, uh, or for instance, they want to move on their aging fleet to something towards full in plugin, or uh, just have that as a solution as well in some cities, this becomes in a really good part of that deal for the USPS. Now you do expect that the next administration, that being Biden's administration, um, they would be spending money into the USPS, uh, the United States National Post, uh, for a reason off their aging fleet, and that would pass on. At least that is my expectation, and this one would definitely benefit in that. Their projected cumulative units sold is, in 2021, is coming in around 9,234, while in 2020 is 4,284. Compared to Workhorse, for instance, is around 2,800. Highland, around 340. Nikola, I don't know if these numbers are accurate, but let's not get there. And, oh, by the way, they also have 9 models available. High is comparable to any other competitor that they're putting on, up with. Now, their customers here are diverse, including some for not prominent names, such as Canada Post here. And you remember when I was talking, I was just talking about uh, the United States Post, now, I don't see their logo here, I might be blind, but I definitely don't. But since they are already working with companies like FedEx, with Canada Post, it really shows, and uh, DHL, they really show that they're actually already giving solutions to kind of companies. So the United States National Post is probably coming up next with that. At least that is my perspective. That's part of what I'm thinking about in terms of DDs. Now, the current availability vehicles are all the way from the F. Uh, 250 for the XL Hybrid all the way to F59. In development are the XL plugins, and that is something massive coming in, or especially for Transit Vans all the way to Ford F59, especially when cities require less pollutions for at least uh, smaller transportation vehicles, such as Ford E350 and 454. Uh, usually these vehicles are for accessible uh, needs on routes for public transit. You have seen that here in Canada. And as, the, as you mentioned here, they have around 1.6 million miles driven already for the last mile deliveries with 550 vehicles already there uh, as the E350 setup vans used for daily mail, mail, mail deliveries. So the, that is part of the contracts I was talking about that would be useful for the United States Post. Here is their uh, current installation facilities. You can see they're positioned all around in the US and in North America, Canada especially as well, and the US. Uh, more around the east and the west coast, nothing really much, for instance, would go on to some of the states, but I do expect that that shouldn't be much of a problem for their supply, at least for the time being. So that kind of covers in a little bit on who they are and what I think about them and the next move. Now coming into the one thing that I did mention, uh, if we go on through here to their evaluation to the profile, you get to see that their market cap is around half a billion, 0.5 billion. And this is, this is here something important that I told you why I think it's undervalued. Now, I did try to go on through key ratios and valuations, but unfortunately, since this is a shell company, they don't really have these values. But if you go on from Bloomberg all the way back in September 17th, the combined company worth, uh, will be worth about $1 billion, including debt, said one of the people, requesting anonymity because the deal is public. Well, the deal is now public, but it's going to be uh, worth around $1 billion. And if the current price is setting it at the valuation for pick to be set at somewhere around half a billion, doesn't that mean there is a gap of half a billion dollars as well? Now, of course, yes, you might be thinking, um, you know, some of the assets over there, that's going to be a part of it. But you think about it, I think even after that dilution, quote unquote, counts, counts in and everything, this is still undervalued because you're expecting very much close to a billion dollars. That's aside from the cash that is going to be uh, actually raised due to the reverse merger. Now, XL Fleet here, they have a Twitter account. And if you're on here, make sure to drop me a follow as well. You'll find it in the description below right here, Ferocia said. But nonetheless, XL Fleet has on a Twitter account, which to keep updating the public on some recent news. So if you're actually interested in this company, Pick or Excel Fleet, make sure to drop them a follow. Some of the recent SEC filings, that's just some basic things related to reverse merger, so nothing scary there in that sense. So I'm going to move forward to the technical analysis part. 
Now here on the technical analysis on the one week perspective, what we get to see it's really strong trend. ADX starting to signaling, hey, be careful, you might want to start considering selling this week. But moving averages looks really bullish. Billion percent R is at overbought. MACD does look bullish in this case, and the William, uh, sorry, momentum still looks strong, but retracting a little. Now, on the moving averages perspective, what we get to see, even though it doesn't really trade within the moving average band, 1410 on the top, 1282 in the middle, and 1154 in the bottom. Now, the next thing is the stochastic fast and the stochastic slow. Both are showing that hey, might, there might be another leg, but it's looking to be a little bit choppy. And we get to see this one as well with a bit of the candles. Bunch of long red candles that really open up higher and then drop down as we go through the day. So that's something interesting. Significant Fibonacci retracement support includes 1657, 1516, 1417, 1318, and 1196, with a significant resistance at 1837. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to go on from one day to two hours and start drawing significant supports and resistance. The current significant support would be at 1689. Below there, we're looking down to 1627. Uh, we can also consider the 1659 to be a significant support and then down to 1587 and then down to 1521 and then 1460 down to 1402 down to 1371 1334 and then 1292 down to 1249 and then jumping down to 1188. current significant resistances It'll include 1732, uh, above there you're looking at 1792, up there 1872, and jumping all the way down, uh, sorry, up to 1901. Now, Ed, comes a quick question on what do you think about this one? Now, before I tell you here, we have a Discord where it's completely free and we just discuss technical analysis, technical indicators, there's no catch. If you would like to join it on there and ask me questions, your trading day, it's completely for free. Uh, feel for you to join it down in the description below now what i think about this one is i really am bullish in the long term investment wise i think this one is solid now coming in towards trading this one is a little bit interesting because i honestly expected for it to start struggling at the 1355 and it did struggle it hit there and it dropped and then it bounced back and then it gapped up and then it filled the gap and then moved back up so, so far there's no gaps to fill and so that is something bullish now, I'm concerned about these massive red candles and then it just opens up higher. So that shows you the majority of the movement is happening after hours where uh, there's a lot less volume or a lot less shares being sold and bought and so volume can be uh, a lot less and the price still to be manipulated up to the level that uh, either directions would go. So that worries me. But I do definitely think that this one is a solid investment for the future. If you're trading, it's hard to tell when is the perfect time to sell. But if you're green, don't get greedy. If you're just trading and trying to move on from one to the next. But if you're investing, you know, maybe it's not time to average up. I like to always average down if I have to. Diversify for your investment, but I do think this one is a solid pick. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Very subscribe and like, and you have a wonderful day.